שלום אבריוואן, כיף להיות בבית. מיניסטר ארדן, אקסלנסיס, ליידיס וג'נטלמן, טרוריסט wish to destroy our lives and our way of life. Cities are where we most live and cities represent our way of life. They are open, diverse, welcoming and tolerant. This is the reason why urban spaces are prime targets for terrorist organizations. We have seen it in cities around the world from Madrid to Manila and from New York to Moscow. Protecting public spaces is a complex endeavor. Restaurants, stadiums, entertainment venues are designed to be open and welcoming. But because of that, they are also vulnerable. They are so-called soft targets. And they will remain soft targets because we want to keep our way of life. Concerns about protecting public places is not new. But ISIS and other terrorist organizations try to attack these places time and again. Cities have responded to the threat of terrorism by installing barriers and cameras in strategic areas, as well as hiring law enforcement personnel. However, however even with the increased security budget, cities will likely continue to face high level of threat in the coming years. Specifically, as was mentioned earlier by the minister, where lone wolf attacks can happen anywhere, anytime, and anyone can find instructions on how to commit attacks just on the internet. Protecting these cities is a huge challenge because we want to do it in, without losing their openness without turning our cities into fortresses. For this, as was also mentioned by the minister earlier, we need all of us, all stakeholders, to work together. Cities must cooperate with law enforcement. They should cooperate with civil society. And we will have here later today a representative of civil society, a major civil society that has done some great work in bringing cities together, the Strong Cities Network, and I encourage you to listen to the experience of the Strong Cities Network and those of you who are representing cities to consider joining the network. Most soft targets in cities are privately owned. Hence, we need cooperation with cities, between cities and the private sector, which is the main theme of this conference. We will have representative, representative here of the NYPD, one of the most sophisticated police forces in the world, who will share with us their experience in cooperation with the private sector. Representative of cities will share their own perspective on cooperation with the, their own local police. In many parts of the world, the private sector can and is already playing an important role in countering terrorism. The big companies, the big content companies, and I won't delve into, deeper into it because we don't have time for this today, are working together with CITED on preventing terrorists from using social media platforms. We established a wonderful cooperation between CITED, the UN Security Council body, charged with counter-terrorism, counter counter with Facebook, Microsoft, Google, and Twitter, to work together on taking down content. Private companies can play an important role in designing secure yet open public spaces. Urban planners, concert organizers, and event planners can work together with the city to make sure that the event is open to all, and yet secu secure. Private companies developed amazing technologies to keep our cities safer. You all will see probably at some point the Muni Expo where some of the state-of-the-art technologies are represented and see what private companies can do to better protect your cities. 
Ladies and gentlemen, on the 1st of October 2017, a major attack hit the city of Las Vegas. A lone shooter by the name of Paddock left 58 concert goers dead and 500 injured. Paddock was able to move an arsenal of weapons into his suite on the 32nd floor of the Marriott Hotel. He reportedly posted a do not disturb sign on his room for several days. He brought into the room 20 firearms and thousands of ammunition. He drilled holes into the wall. He posted cameras to notify him of law enforcement. He broke two windows and barred the entrance to the room instead in case law enforcement hits there. All this has happened in the hotel. And just imagine if one of the hotel guest, hosts, one of the hotel staff, would have notified someone that something suspicious is happening in this room. Perhaps 58 people were still alive today. We don't know. But we need to train hotel staff. Hotel staff need to be able to cooperate with law enforcement to know first what to look for, not to spy on their guests, but to see if hotel guests behave in such strange way. Maybe you need to tell someone. Maybe that person will know more and perhaps be able to save life, lives of many. The private sector has more roles to play. It can support communication in times of crisis. It can help investigations. We will have later today a representative of Uber who will share with us their own experience in those two areas, how to support communication in times of crisis and how private companies can help in investigation. The private, the private sector can help in recovery from attacks. It can help in supporting communities or sectors. We will have also a representative of the city of Madrid another city that has been hit hard by terrorism, and he will share with us how they operate and how they cooperate with the private sector. This was the mindset, the potential of cooperation between the private sector and the public sector of Resolution 2396 of the UN Security Council, which calls member states to cooperate better between the private and the public in order to prevent, protect, mitigate, investigate, and respond to attacks against soft targets. Based on this resolution, the United Nations Counterterrorism Executive Directorate of the Security Council, which I represent to her here today with my colleague, Anne Maria Sesma decided to support cities and the private sector in building this partnership. The event we're, we're holding today is the first of its kind globally, and we are very proud to have it here. But it is not the last one. More events will follow, more cities will join, and more companies will join. I am extremely thankful to the Federation of Local Authorities for working with us on this first of its kind event. It is this kind of leadership like you show today that allows us to develop this important partnership. But we need more partnerships. We need everyone and everyone in this room to join. We will have a whole day discussions today. And those of you who are interested in supporting this partnership are welcome to join us tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. We will have a special closed session in room I, which I think is on this floor. And I invite all of you to come and be with us for a more focused discussions on how to join our initiative, how to make your company or your city part of this global movement. Sorry. But we should not stop there. And the minister has already mentioned that whatever we do with companies has to also take into account some of the risks and balancing that we have to take care of. Some of these technologies 
to include surveillance technologies, cyber technologies, drones technologies, and biometric technology can be very easily abused, and they are very intrusive. In fact, all of them have been abused in one way or another. Cooperation of cities with the private sector require guidance and respect for human rights by both sides, by the side of the city and by the side of the private sector. Companies cannot just offer to anyone who is willing to pay enough money technologies that were developed for national security. In the same manner, we cannot use technologies that were developed for counterterrorism, for private commercial rivalries, or even worse, against civil society, opposition leaders, or journalists. When we do so without proper checks and balance, we run the risk of being counterproductive, damaging our own values that terrorists try to use against us. Experience shows that companies that protect and promote human rights in their business engagements contribute more to their communities and even to their shareholders. We will dedicate a whole session today to this balancing between the right of privacy and the need to share without magic solutions, but understanding the complex issue and trying to work together on how to solve some of this dilemma. Lastly, I would like to share with you a personal experience. Some 23 years ago, I was working still in Tel Aviv, and at the day of Purim, which is a national holiday in Israel, Tel Aviv was attacked. I've seen the smoke of the attack over Dizengoff Center from my office. It was a national day of celebration, and dozens of people were killed by a suicide bomber. Some 21 years later, the city of New York has experienced the same attack on the eve of Halloween. Halloween and Purim are more or less the same holiday. Children put customs, people celebrate, carnivals and parade are crossing the cities. What was interesting for me in both events, which I remember up till today, was the reaction of the cities of Tel Aviv and New York. I was very intrigued to see how the react will be. And the reaction was exactly what cities should continue doing. These are some of the pictures that I was taking in New York. And you could see that the both cities reacted to the crisis with the right response, continuing their way of life. Because this is what terrorists are trying to take from us. They're trying to take our way of life. And the responsibility of cities is to try to keep it. And that requires leadership. And our concluding session will bring two mayors of cities that were hit hard recently. The city of Pittsburgh, and we are very thankful to the mayor of Pittsburgh for being with us today, and the city of Strasbourg, who was also hit hard. This leadership, beyond everything that we do, enforcing police, strengthening technologies, strengthening cooperation between public sector and civil society and between private sector and private companies is what requires most. And this is the best response that cities can give to terrorist attacks. Thank you.